In this video, we're going to take our first look at the Maelstrom Grain Table Synthesizer. Now, the first thing to understand about Maelstrom is that Grain Table is an all new form of synthesis invented by propeller heads just for this synthesizer. It's a combination of two kinds of synthesis granular and wavetable. Granular synthesis is actually quite similar to sample based synthesis, except where sample based synthesis uses long and audible samples of a particular sound. Grain-based synthesis chops these samples into very small pieces, usually around a millisecond, maybe 10 milliseconds long. These grains are then stacked and replayed at varying speeds to achieve different sets of sounds. And typically, grain-based or granular synthesis results in more ethereal and spacey type sounds. Wavetable synthesis operates a little differently. A traditional wavetable is a collection of single cycle waveforms that the synthesizer you're using will scroll between in real time, generating a different set of sound than if the single waveforms were repeated on their own. So in the case of the Maelstrom, Propeller Heads has replaced the single cycle waveforms in the wavetable with the grains of granular synthesis, giving us an extremely flexible way to create our sounds. And you can see just by looking at the front panel here, that when compared to Subtractor, Maelstrom is a much more intricate synth with many more options available to us for modulating and creating new sounds. Now on the left hand side here, we have a set of performance modulators very similar to Subtractors. You can see that we have polyphony settings, legato, portamento, we have velocity settings, as well as mod wheel settings, and the ability to shift these settings between either oscillator A or oscillator B, based on these switches here. We also have pitch bend range and mod wheel just like the subtractor. Now here's where things get a little different. In this middle section here, you can see that we have two oscillators available to us, each with the ability to scroll between a wide variety of wavetables and a motion control to control how fast we scroll through those wavetables, an index control that controls which point in the wavetable we will start at, as well as shift, octave, semitone, and scent controls similar to subtractors. But in this synth, we have an ADSR envelope for each oscillator as well as its own volume knob. In addition to envelopes and volume controls for each synthesizer, through these buttons here, we have the ability to control our routing through Maelstrom's two filters, see here filter B and here filter A, and a shaper, which is a specific distortion unit designed for Maelstrom. Each of these filters have five modes. We have a low pass at 12 decibels per octave, a bandpass at 12 decibels per octave, and three kinds of filters that we haven't seen yet. A positive comb, a negative comb, and an AM. Not to worry, we will cover these forms of filters in a later video. Now we can also see that each of the two filters has a resonance and frequency knob, similar to subtractors filters, as well as an envelope switch and a KBD switch. And if you look above the filters in the top right hand corner of the synth, we see that we have a global filter envelope with an amount control and an invert switch. Below the filters and to the right, we have a knob that controls the spread, which means that we can pan the output of one filter to the left and pan the output of the other filter to the right, as well as a master volume knob. Now above filter B and to the left of filter A, we have the shaper. The shaper offers us five different modes of distortion and an amount control. We have sine, saturate, clip, quantize, and noise distortion. Through the various buttons to the right of the oscillators and above each filter and distortion section, we have the ability to control our routing. And there are extensive possibilities here as we have the ability to send oscillator one straight into the shaper, or we can turn the shaper off send oscillator one straight into filter A, or turn filter A off and let oscillator one come through raw. We can choose to also send it to filter B, or have oscillator B sent right into filter B. This can be sent into the shaper or turned off as well. Now here's where things get really crazy. Directly above the oscillators, we have two mod sections, mod A and mod B. These modulators actually operate very similarly to the LFOs from Subtractor in that they allow us to use a waveform to modulate a set of parameters. And much like Subtractor's LFOs, our two modulators have unique and distinct possibilities for modulation for either filter or oscillator. They both use the same set of waveforms, and we can scroll between a few of the waveforms here. 
and just see some of our options. They both have one shot and sync capabilities to either send the waveform through just one time or to sync to our song's tempo. They also both have the ability to affect either oscillator or filter, which is right here in the middle, or signal chain A or signal chain B individually. We can see that on mod A, we have a rate control, an ability to affect the pitch, the index, or the shift setting of either of our signal chains. On modulator B, we have the same rate control, but of the ability to affect the motion, the volume, the filter, or the scale of modulator A, which presents another set of unique routing possibilities. Now, this first look at Maelstrom may raise more questions than it does provide answers, but that's okay because the next video is going to detail the oscillator section. Thanks for watching.